Hello YouTube, this is DrawingKit1313 and welcome to episode 7... <laughs> I think it's 7, is it 7? Let me go ahead and check. Yep, it's episode 7. <laughs> I had like a complete mind blank there, I was like, wait, uh, crap. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, welcome to episode 7. I feel like I've said that before, and I have. Um, I actually recorded this whole episode, um... A while back, and <laughs> Traps was not recording sound, so that was useless. Um, so, needless to say, I kind of just spent the past few minutes um, kind of going around, put myself in cheat mode, um, got almost everything that I crafted, and uh, just kind of used NEI to help me out with. Um, oops, you weren't supposed to see that yet. Just kind of used NEI to help me out. Um, what I'll do is I'll take the items that I crafted for this episode and I gave myself all the things that were used to create that item and then I deleted it just so I can, you know, craft it again for you and kind of pretend like nothing happens even though, um, you guys already know because I just told you. But anyways, we have a few things to do. Um, hopefully this episode will go a little bit quicker. Um, you know, since I don't have to think of what I have to do, I already know what I'm going to do. Um, so some of the things that you missed, um, I had my Eternalist Fuel upgrading, um, a lot. Um, this is Eternalist Fuel, and it is the highest tier fuel source in Equivalent Exchange. It's used to craft a whole bunch of cool things, so I'm just kind of making a few pieces. I actually only want one more after that. Um, another thing to note is that my Mobius Fuel, I had six pieces of that cooking up, and that all finished. Um, but we'll get to that uh, in a few minutes. Um, over here, I um, discovered something else, um, and it is it was the uh, Hoe of the Mystic, um, kind of similar to the Sword of the Zephyr, Zephyr Sword of the Zephyr, um, in that you know it's kind of you know does the regular function as a uh, hoe, only um, you know it fills like a huge area. Um, but anyways, you know I didn't craft that because I figured I don't quite need it just yet. Um, but I did craft something else. I crafted a Thaumonomicon. A Thaumonomicon, which is crafted like this. Oops. That was weird. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted to see. That is odd. Alright, well let's go into here and check it out then. <clears throat> Thaumonomicon. Look at it, it's just a book surrounded by four um, discoveries. Um, it could be any type of discovery. I mean, these, it says that it's like the Crucible of Eyes, Thaumium Crucible, you know, things like that. But it could be any of them. Uh, it doesn't have to be just a certain set. Um, and then, you know, it's crafted. And what it does, if I go ahead and put it in my inventory here, and we right click on it, you can see that it stores all of our, um, discoveries in one place. So, very, very, um, handy and um, it just kind of consolidates all those different scrolls that we have and puts them into one place and then of course I did some uh, researching of those scrolls I didn't get anything but you know whatever so let's see lost um, the hoe of the mystic as you can see right here uh, the mystical hoe is capable of tilling or harvesting a large field at once and then holding shift suppresses this power so pretty cool similar recipe to that of the sword of zephyr only it uses uh, these crystals. So that's pretty neat. Uh, that's a fun toy and it will be very useful um, in the future. And there's a zombie at my door. Making me destroy my stuff. Oh, he dropped a uh, an iron shovel. How nice of him. Um, so, let's go ahead and just turn this iron shovel. I could use a few torches. Okay. More torches. Okay, and then I could use some cobble. Alrighty, so that's pretty much what I did there um, in terms of Thawncraft. Back to equivalent exchange, I said that I um, finished with this 6 Mobius fuel, and that I did. And you know what? I just forgot. I forgot to give myself more gunpowder. Um, so, because I actually crafted this earlier, like I said, I was just giving myself the items, and I deleted this, uh, forgetting that I had to. I use, actually used 10 pieces of gunpowder in order to do this. So, let me go ahead and find gunpowder somewhere here. 
gunpowder. There we go. I'm gonna give myself ten more pieces of it. There we go. Because that's as much as I had uh, at the start of the last episode that I failed at recording. And I only need ten of them. And I can probably go ahead and put this zombie brain away, as well as the pig flesh that I seem to have tamed. So, what are we crafting? Well, that is a good question. I'm also going to need eight pieces of sand, I think. Yeah, eight pieces. Go over here and put this zombie brain away. And in our crafting table, we will go ahead and... Oops. There you go. Just like this. Um, this is a vanilla item. And it is TNT. Simple, right? Well, when you combine a piece of TNT... With the piece of Mobius fuel, you'll get Nova Catalyst. Nova Catalysts are pretty cool. They function pretty much the same way that a piece of TNT does, in that it explodes. The only difference is, is it doesn't hurt the player, and it doesn't destroy the items that it explodes. Which is very good and makes it perfect for mining. However, that's not what we're going to use it for today. We are going to use it for, of course, I don't have the correct things that I need. Let me go ahead and sleep. We're going to use it to craft another item that is going to be um, extremely helpful in um, mining and all that stuff. I need a piece of iron. I then need a piece of flint. And with our crafting table again, we're going to craft up another vanilla item, flint and steel. And with this flint and steel, Nova Catalysts, and more Mobius fuel, we get Destruction Catalyst. A Destruction Catalyst, that is. And a Destruction Catalyst is a very fun toy. It does require um, redstone or some type of fuel source, like I could use Mobius fuel, I could use Eternal's fuel. I even believe that I could use Glowstone. Uh, but I'm, I'm not. Oh, by the way, um, in between episodes, I mentioned this you know, when I was recording, but um, in between, you know, episode 6 and now, I went ahead and just did a whole bunch of mining. I did so much of that strip mine, and um, I now have 38 diamonds. So, pretty awesome, right? So, let's go ahead down over to here. Go down into our mine. And let's go ahead and, I don't know, let's just play around right here. With this destruction catalyst, if I just go up to a wall and I right click, it's going to um, kind of dig out a 1x3x3 three three area, or I guess a 3x1x3 three three area. And um, if you noticed, when I did that, it dropped a nice little item ball. These item balls are something that are, um, they come with uh, equivalent exchange 2, and it is pretty much used just to consolidate all the items that you get into one single spot so that, you know, when you are dealing with an item that takes a lot of items and just puts them all on the ground. It reduces lag by putting all of them in one spot. So a lot easier. And you can see we got um we have 63 cobblestone here. If we do this, should be nine because it's three by three. Pick it up, we now have sixty-eight or sixty-four plus eight. So that's a total of nine because we had sixty-three, that's one, and then eight, that's nine. Now it's pretty cool, you know we can go along and just do some mining like that. But that's kind of annoying and a little bit inefficient. It's this aqueous crystal. So what we can do is we use V, charge it up a little bit, and it has three different charge levels. And now if we go up to a wall and we click, bam, it mines out a huge area just like that for us. So very convenient, very um, easy, and will definitely help me with mining. There we go. Um, by the way, this is another thing that I showed before. Um, oh, a lot of stuff. Uh, with this strip mine, um, basically the system that I have found out is kind of the best for me. Um, you can see that I have them every five, so at the end of this it's one, two, three, four, and five, and then another one. What this allows me to do is it allows me to dig all the way as far as I want with this one, straight ahead, and then I could also go off to the side. Same with the ones down here, I could also go off to the side, and it leaves a, um, a one block gap for the floor of that one and the roof of that one so that each mine doesn't interfere with each other. And in theory, I can go ahead and just mine uh, pretty much all of the area. I can pretty much mine anything with this. So very efficient, and I found it to be kind of the best way for me. And having this uh, destruction catalyst will definitely help me because I can just you know go up somewhere, click that, 
Go up to here, click that, there you go. Click that, click that. Now, a few of you may be saying, oh, well, that is definitely overpowered. Um, well, no, because it is using redstone. You can see that I started out with about a stack of redstone, and just with that little bit of mining, I am now down to half a stack of redstone. So it still uses a little bit of resources. You can see that it did take a little bit to craft. Um, but, you know, other than that, I don't know. I don't really care if it's overpowered or not. Mining is not one of the things that I like to do. Um, but this will... What the hell? Why are these... Why all these mobs? Get away. Why are you doing so, many, so much damage? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and eat and go ahead and get started with the next thing that we want to do. Another brain. I didn't think that zombies had brains. Anyways, so the next thing that I want to do, I have decided, is I want to go ahead and get started with uh, forestry. Um, forestry is a mod, obviously, um, and it's kind of one of my favorite. It allows for a lot of automation um, for getting, you know, kind of like all the different farms. Um, so this includes like pumpkins, trees, uh, wheat, sugarcane, all that fun stuff. So it'll kind of allow me to, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? <laughs> it'll allow me to get a whole bunch of resources and kind of, you know, set up automatic systems so I can get them. So pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead and sort out my inventory real quick. There we go. Put ores in here. Um, by the way, um, I am encountering that problem again, um, which you probably may have seen from last time. If I take this out, I just logged into this game. I have not used this before. And what you should be... So, okay, never mind. Seems like it's working now. Interesting. Alright. Well, occasionally I've been encountering that problem where it seems to forget that it's hooked up to a large power source right here. And it just, you know, doesn't use the power from here. Like, it just does not seem to flow. Um, but I guess it seems to have corrected that. Nothing. Okay. Alrighty. So, like I said... Oh, I should probably smelt up this copper stuff. Mm, there we go. Alright, that seems to be working too. Okay, well, never mind. Maybe it's just bipolar or something. Um, so, like I said, I want to get started with forestry. There are two things that I want to craft because there's one farm that I really want to get going. Um, this farm is going to produce what is called peat, and peat is a very good resource. It's 100% renewable, very easy to craft, and just kind of a, you know, very good way. Uh, peat is similar to coal in that it can be burned in a furnace, or, you know, some other type of machine to produce energy, um, and like I said, it's renewable, so I will have no problem producing it, and, um, it's very efficient. It's a little bit more efficient than coal, and a little more ob easier to obtain. So, what I want to craft, I actually want to craft two things, like I said. The first thing being a peat bog. Peat bog is crafted with some copper ingots, a sturdy machine, and some glass, getting us a peat bog. A sturdy machine, by the way, is crafted with some bronze ingots, um, you know, just in kind of like a furnace type uh, pattern. And of course, a bronze ingot is crafted with tin and copper. Any tin and copper, to be exact. And once we have that, the next thing that I want to craft is a a turbury. Turbury is crafted with a sturdy machine again, some clay, and some glass. Now, like I said, I already recorded this episode a while back, or not a while back, but earlier today, and um, was not able to upload it because the sound wasn't recording, so I actually already crafted these, and they are lying right here. Turbury and peat bog. Now, in a turbary, or sorry, in a peat bog, what it's going to do is it's going to plant what is called bog earth. It's going to plant it around in kind of, you know, a square fashion. I forget the exact dimensions. It's like a 12 by 12 or something crazy like that. Pretty nice size farm, and it's going to plant it down, and it's going to plant down what is called bog earth, which is going to grow into peat, which is cool. Um, however, we 
don't want to have to harvest it ourselves. No, that's the whole purpose of forestry is to have automation going and whatnot. So to automate it, we are going to use what is called a turbary, and that is going to harvest the peat for us. So um, eventually what we should have ourselves here is just kind of a constant supply of stuff that can supply us with power. So we need to craft this stuff called bog earth. Bog earth, like I said, I already recorded this episode a while ago, so I already have it crafted. But bog earth is crafted with some dirt, some sand, and either a water bucket, a water can, a water capsule, another water capsule, or water cells. Water cells are um, made with empty cells. Let me go ahead back to wherever this stuff is. Empty cells. Um, empty cells are from Industrial Craft 2, and they are crafted with just some tin, kind of in that arrangement. And with this these empty cells. If you go up to any water source and you just right click on them, it will fill up the uh, empty capsule or empty cell with water, giving you water cells. And then of course the water cells can be combined with dirt and sand to produce what is called bog earth. Of course I already have a whole bunch of this produced, so no worries there. And we are going to need some other things. Um, of course, I, I use this mod often, and it's probably one of my favorite mods. It's just so useful there. It's used pretty much with anything. I can be used in conjunction with just about any mod. The mod that I'm talking about is Logistics Pipe. Logistic Pipes. Or Logistics Pipes. Something along that line. And let me go ahead and craft a few right now. I am going to need some stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot. This, this isn't supposed to be there. I'm going to need two diamonds, four redstone, um, I'm going to need um, going to need some gold and some iron, might as well just keep those on me, and I have the wood. I have the wood. <laughs> so we are going to craft up, uh, you know what, let's go for broke and just craft up four of these right here. So with these sticks, if I put them in an arrangement like this, um, if I didn't mess up, we get wooden gears. Wooden gears are part of buildcraft, and um, yeah, they're kind of the main component in pretty much any buildcraft machine. Um, if you're confused by what they are, you can go ahead and check out my spotlight, hint, hint. Um, and basically, just go ahead and click those, we get wooden gears. Now, wooden gears are pretty cool, but they, um, they're just, you know, the basic thing. They're kind of like the lowest tier of, uh, you know, gear that you can have. You can upgrade these further by putting cobblestone around them and you get stone gears. You can upgrade these stone gears even further by putting iron ingots around them and this gets you iron gears. And of course hopefully you see where I'm going with this. We get gold ingots and we get gold gears. There's one tier higher than this being uh, diamond gears but I don't really need to craft those because that's not part of the recipe that I want and we are going to need more redstone. Alrighty, so now we are going to craft up more sticks and with these sticks we are going to craft up some redstone torches. With these redstone torches, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. With these diamonds, if we put one on both, one on uh, each side um, and put a piece of glass in the middle, we get diamond transport pipes. Diamond transport pipes are pretty cool, they're part of Buildcraft and the um, you know many pipes that Buildcraft adds to the game. Um, pretty much just for transporting items. Diamond pipe, diamond transport pipe in particular is used to sort items. However, that is not what we're going to use it for. We're going to use it in a component for uh, logistics, pipe, logistics pipes. So if we put our gold gears on the sides with diamond transport pipe in the middle, redstone torch on the top and bottom, and then some glass in the corners. Damn it. Damn it. There we go. We get basic logistics pipes. And I'm going to craft up a whole bunch of these. You can see that I got myself 32 because we are going to start using them uh, a lot more in this episode or in this series. Um, however, we don't really need too many of them at the moment. We're going to need two lappies, one glowstone, and two basic logistics pipes. Another thing that we are going to need, um, and I can go ahead and just get that later. But with these logistics pipes, we are going to craft one with um, lapis lazuli on both sides. And this is going to get us a supplier logistics pipe. Put a glowstone dust on top, and this gets us a provider logistics pipe. 
We're going to go over to our transmutation table and get some smooth stone. Um, just, I don't know. Just four of them should be fine. And then with the crafting table, if we put smooth stone on both sides, put uh, glass in the middle, we get stone transport pipes. Again, part of Buildcraft, many pipes that are added. Um, and I'm going to sleep, but I can't, so there's monster near spot. Mon there. <laughs> Sorry, it is getting a little late. I wasn't planning on staying up this late to finish this episode, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take care of those monsters, and I'll be right back. You know what? That took longer than I thought it would. <laughs> God, that took forever, I swear. It's like there's just monster after monster, and I'll go back to my house and try to sleep, and I wouldn't be able to because a stupid creeper or a stupid zombie would spawn, like, right in this little, kind of like a courtyard in the middle of my house. You can see that there is a pig there, but I'm not all too concerned about pigs. Um, but yeah. What a pain. What a pain, I tell you. Oh, look. This thing's done. Let's go ahead and harvest these things. Creeper. Never mind, I don't care that much anymore. Alright, so let's go ahead and get back to what I was going to do. And that is get started with this forestry machine that we have ourselves here. I'm going to fly over here and you can see that I already have a little bit of an area planned out. Of course some... Oh, poor pig. Sorry, I killed your lunch. Come on, die, damn it. Alright, cool. No! Jeez. Damn it. I hate crocodiles. Bitch. Alright, so. This is why all my armor keeps breaking. Damn crocodiles. Maybe they're mad because I'm wearing their brothers. Alright, so. Like I said, we are going to place this right here. Oops, not that. Let's go ahead and t take that down, because trust me, um, all it takes is an accidental right-click, and half your house has just disappeared. It's happened before. <laughs> um, so, we are going to place this thing down right there, and inside, you know, I already, I already showed you this, um, and, you know, I'm going to say no. I'm going to hold off on that, I'm going to place my turbary down right next to it. There is no um, inventory or anything, but I am going to dig down a layer. Actually, you know what, I don't think I need to dig down a whole layer, but you know, whatever. Alrighty. Just collect all this stuff. And, let's see. I'm actually going to fill this in, because that's not exactly what I need. Yeah, I just need to dig down. Alright, there we go. Okay, so just a nice little area, giving us room to work with while we are down in this little basement type thing. Alrighty, so I think that's good enough. Alrighty, so now what we are going to do is we are going to hook this supplier pipe up to our turbary, okay? Or sorry, not a turbary, but our peat bog. So that is going to go right there. We are then going to place a chest down. Eh, let's just place it right there, why not? And we are going to place some bog earth in there. Now what we are going to do is we are going to hook this provider pipe up to there, and we are going to connect these two pipes using stone transport pipes. Simple, right? So, this bog earth will be used, and by the way, I forgot to show you this recipe. Um, this is a wrench, it is a build craft wrench, and it is crafted with, you know, stone gear and some iron ingots. And it's kind of the same as the Industrial Craft 2 wrench is that, in that it is used to manipulate some of the machines and pipes that are used in Buildcraft. The only difference is, is well, it can't be used for Industrial Craft. So, now that we have that finished, we are going to right-click on here with our wrench, and it's going to open this thing right here. It says, Items to Keep Stocked. And I forgot, I want a stack of bog earth. In this Items to Keep Stock, we are going to put bog earth. Notice how it does not use the items, which is nice. Alright, so we are going to say partial request yes, and what this supplier pipe does is it will keep however, or whatever item that we require, and it will keep it stocked inside of the inventory that is connected to.
So for example, we just told it to keep a whole stack of ball earth inside of this turbary right here. And you can see that it is requesting taking the stuff out of here, putting it into there. Alrighty. So now what parser request does is it says, oh, well, if you don't have a full stack of bog earth, well, then I'm going to just send as many as I can. Um, and if you had parser request set to no, it's going to say, well, I don't have 64 bog earth, so I'm not going to send any. So that's what that does. And this one, sure, um, you know, since this only has four things, four slots available, um, and we have like eight stacks of bog earth, this will kind of allow it to continue, and we don't have to keep up with as much maintenance of it. So I'm going to get out of there. And now we need some way of powering these things. Let's go travel back on home, and I'm going to need to craft another one of these soon, aren't I? Oh, jeez. Alrighty, so, back in here, we're going to craft up something called a... Why? Why do I have so many turtles in my house? It's like, they just spawn. They, why, why isn't it made to where... Oh, they can only spawn on grass. That's what it should be. But instead, no, I have like all I have a whole bunch of turtles down in my cave and then I have them at my house. They're just freaking everywhere. Anyways, um What was I doing? I was getting stuff, wasn't I? Yes, I was getting the materials that are necessary for crafting a combustion or not combustion engine. I'm going to craft the materials necessary to craft a an engine um, from Buildcraft. So we are just going to get some sticks, craft those into wooden gears, craft these gears into stone gears, and uh, then we are going to get some iron, one piece of iron, one piece of redstone, and with this we are going to craft up another vanilla item. This one is a piston. Okay, with this piston we are going to put it on the bottom, we are going to put stone gears on either side, glass in the middle right there, and then some stone up top, getting us a steam engine. There are three tiers of engines available in Buildcraft, from least effective to most effective, they are redstone engines, and then come steam engines, and then the highest being combustion engines. So there goes my steam, and um, yeah, sorry, I'll check that later. Um, now, redstone engines, they don't require any, um, no, actually, I should have sticks somewhere. They don't require any type of fuel source, they just run off of redstone signal, and they're fairly slow and inefficient. Um, now, steam engines, they will run off of coal or other burnable objects, and they are kind of efficient, um, but of course they do use coal. So I'm going to get like a half a stack. Now, a uh, problem with steam engines is that if you leave them running too long, they will explode. And the explosion isn't too pretty, to be um, to be honest. Um, it will kind of destroy things, and it will uh, kind of annoy you. Um, so, what I'm doing now is I'm going to put a stack of coal in there, but of course nothing's going to happen because we need some type of resistance signal. I'm going to use a lever, that way I can turn it on and off as I please. Oops, wrong place, dum-dum. Oops, that's not it either. Okay, there we go. So, now with this, it is going to power, it's going to take probably a few seconds to, um, you know, get started with everything. But as you can see, it's starting to dig out a little area right there. I forget how large it will dig out, but this should be just fine. If I had to guess, it would be something like this. Alrighty. Alrighty, so, you know, this is just going to go along um, happily, and um, it's going to be pretty cool. Now, um, let me go ahead and check the time of this video, and I'll be right back. Alright, so while I am waiting for that to, um, you know, dig out a nice little area, I'm going to go ahead and sleep, and I'm going to craft up one last item for this episode. Um, it's right around the 30 minute mark at this point, and I need to start wrapping things up. The item that I'm going to craft pertain pertains to, um, equivalent exchange. It's going to require a diamond, 
You know what, let me go ahead and check out the uses for this. Alright, so here's what I want to craft. I need a chest, some iron ingots, some stone, diamonds. Okay, I think I can do that. Got my diamonds. Got my iron. Now I have my iron. Going to need some more smooth stone, and then in here we should have a chest. Alright, so what I'm crafting here... Once we get two pieces of smooth stone, what I'm crafting here, as you just saw, is an alchemical chest. Alchemical chest is, uh, you know, pretty much just like a chest, um, only it has a very large inventory. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it has a very large inventory. But that's not exactly what I'm going to use it for. You can see that um, another cool thing about it is it kind of works like these chests and that it can be placed right next to another uh, chest and have no problems. But another thing to note, it has a very large inventory. Now, why am I using um, the iron chest mod instead of the alchemical chest? Well, because, I don't know, I like to use different mods. But I'm not going to use this for storing items. Instead, I'm going to use it um, to craft something else. <laughs> So let me go ahead and just do some searching around here. I wonder if I have any wool. Oh cool, I have the perfect amount of wool right here. Of course I do want it to be another color. Let's make it uh, blue, shall we? Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn my wool into blue wool. And with this, I'm going to need three more pieces of this uh, neat little covalence dust, the highest tier. And I'm going to put this across the top, put my alchemical chest in the middle, and then put my blue wool around it. This gets us a blue alchemy bag. Alchemy bags are very cool, and I will definitely be using them, especially for when I'm going mining with my handy dandy uh, destruction catalyst here. Now, what an alchemical bag does is it's pretty much like a portable chest, I would say, only it's a bag. So, just right-clicking with it, opens up this huge inventory, you see that it has the same inventory space as the um, alchemical chest, which makes sense because that's what it was crafted with, and uh, it's portable. That's pretty cool, you know, I could just go ahead and, oops, let's open it back up. I could just go ahead and just throw a whole bunch of stuff in here, and, you know, pretty cool. I could just store stuff. Don't put your alchemy bag inside your alchemy bag, or else you have to craft a new one. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now I have nothing in my inventory, but if I open this back up, you can see that I have it. Now what happens if I drop it? Well, not to worry. If I drop it, and I pick it back up, everything's still in there. Now, what happens if I destroy it? Well, that's a good question. Let me go ahead into cheat mode and show you what happens. Cheat mode. I am going to just delete it right there so it just deleted nothing in my inventory now and if I scroll back through and find all the alchemy bags and I find the same exact color notice how if we had a different color nothing would be in there okay but oops but if we find the same exact color like this one and we open it back up all our stuff is still in there so um, kind of the inventory is saved according to um, the color bag and according to your username um, so, for example, like if you were using these on a server, no one would be able to access your stuff even if they got the same colored bag. It would depend on their username. So, that's pretty neat. I'm going to turn myself back into resume mode here and uh, kind of get all my stuff back. So that's just kind of the last thing that I wanted to craft for you guys uh, in this episode. I'm going to grab my Sword of the Zephyr, and I'm going to zoom over here. And you can see that, one, it made a big mess. And it's still not done. It's kind of slow because we only have a steam engine going along with it, so... Yep. Alright, so, like I said, I'm going to have to start wrapping it up because it is around that 30 minute mark. Actually, it's probably past that by now. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode, um, and, uh, you know, I hope that it's kind of taught you something about these mods and, you know, all that other fun stuff that I always say at the end of my episodes. Um, yeah. I think next episode I'm going to continue with kind of the automation of this farm. Um, kind of get, you know, up and running so that I don't really have to bother with it as much. Um, another thing that I'm going to do is I may start on kind of a sorting system type thing. Um, 
Now, I'm not too sure if I want to do red power or if I want to do, um, uh, if I want to do red power or if I want to do logistics pipes. I have experience with doing both of those, but, you know, I don't know. I'm going to leave it up to you guys, though, so if you want me to do a red power sorting system, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. If you want me to do a logistics pipe sorting system, go ahead and put a comment in that thing. Um, but, anyways, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, like I said, next episode, um, probably some more Thomcraft research, probably some more forestry stuff, and possibly, maybe if I have time, get started on a, um, sorting, automatic sorting system. So, until then, this has been Dronica 1313, again, hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you all next time. Bye.